to what level of responsibility do you accept the crisis in our prisons at the moment? Well, clearly, you know, the prison populations are large and we could have delivered more places, but we were delivering them at record levels, 100 a week last year. We, we planned to deliver 20,000 places, £4 billion of investment. We've delivered 6,000 of those, 14,000 to deliver. That's now the responsibility of the, of the Labour government and they've got to step up to the plate to deliver them. What was the delay? Well, I think it's always a case if you decide to lock people up, Sooner or later, that prison population is, is going to exceed the number of places. But we were always tough on crime. So, yes, there were some timing issues, and we had COVID crisis where you couldn't deliver the places. So oh, a number of things no. going in the way. No, no. I mean, that's true. Oh, it's when it comes true, to construction, okay. they were the first people back during COVID. Yeah, but it did, did delay things, as you can... Uh, you, I'm sure you'll recognise. There were all kind of supply chain issues following that. So it did cause delays. But, you know, I'm not saying we didn't make mistakes. Of course, governments always do. But we were doing the right things. 20,000 more places, £4 billion of investment. Labour need, now need to be held to account for that. What are they do now to deliver those places? places. We delivered 6,000, yeah, so 14,000 more. Yeah. No, but we had 20,000 places we had planned. Yeah. 6,000 delivered, 14,000 more to be delivered. you didn't deliver them, so you delivered 6,000. <laughs> well, we weren't in government anymore. That was 6,000 by the time we were voted out of office. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, so we can't be responsible for those now. <laughs> Labour have got to take responsibility for that. But the actual fact is you delivered 6,000. Um, right. You also resorted to letting prisoners out early. We did, but we always made sure they were people who were not a danger to society. That was the plan. It, you know, it did become a, the point that uh, prison population was too large and we couldn't put people in prison who needed to be there. We had to take some difficult decisions on that basis. What we then saw from Labour, of course, is them go even further with those plans and make mistakes in terms of releasing people who were actually dangerous. 37 people were released by mistake who were dangerous, some of whom were, were dangerous dangerous to society. So, again, and Labour have got to account back. for that. That was a mistake. They, they acknowledged yeah. that it back. was a mistake and yep. they're now all back behind bars again. And now they're releasing more people, people who have been serving longer sentences of five years or more, and there are real concerns that those people will be a danger to society and Labour have got to account for the people, account for the fact they are releasing those people but make sure the public is kept safe. And well, they say they've learned from that mistake well, and see. it was a hitch with the paperwork. OK. Well, is that a good excuse? I don't know if it is or not, but anyway, well, an I say, people make mistakes and then it shouldn't happen again, but let's see if it does. But I think what we saw in government, when we're in government, is Labour oppose our plans for tougher sentences, oppose our plans for more prison places. Now they've got to be held to account for what they do now in terms of, of locking people up and making sure the place is available to do that. That happens on this show, trust me. Um, how do you feel about the fact that a former Conservative Justice Secretary is now leading the review on behalf of the Labour Party, the government? Well, David Gork's a good man. You know, I was, uh, he was a friend of mine when in Parliament, you know, and, you know, my mum rehabilitated defenders. That's what she did. She looked for uh, jobs for them and places for them to live. And we want to try and make, want to make sure people who wouldn't do well in prison or prison's the wrong thing for them have other alternatives. That wasn't something we were happy to look at. And, and um, so we should look at different solutions for different types of person. But, um, but nevertheless, that should not mean that dangerous offenders don't end up in prison. And I worry about things like house arrest, for example, whether that sends the right message to people who are thinking of committing a crime or, well, it doesn't matter because we're not going to go to jail anyway. So there has to be that deterrent of prison and a way to keep the public safe. Talk to me about the Employment Rights Bill. The government says the Employment Rights Bill will help exploitative zero-hours contracts and fire and rehire practices and strengthen statutory sick pay. Well, we're very concerned about it. We're not against the workers' rights elements of it. We strengthen workers' rights in our time in office, time and time again. I think the concern we have here is twofold. The impacts on small businesses, a £5 billion cost in their own impact assessment, the Labour didn't issue, didn't release till a few hours before the debate yesterday, £5 billion. That's £3,000 for every single business in this country every single year. And the ones that will suffer worse from that are small businesses. This is existential for small businesses. It really could. If you get somebody who takes you to an employment tribunal, as they will be able to do from day one of their employment, it means your business could be finished because it can take thousands of pounds, perhaps tens of thousands of pounds to, to defend that claim 
it may be a spurious claim, and that can happen, though. So small businesses, we have real concerns and some of the bureaucracy around this, but the biggest concern we have, new powers to trade unions that we've not seen since the 1970s. I remember the 1970s, you're probably too young, Kay, but, oh, uh, but it was not a good place to be in the UK, and this is the powers they are getting, unbridled powers, scrapping of all thresholds in terms of union representation, negotiating with employers, calling people out on strike, no minimum thresholds needed anymore. Massive powers of trade unions. OK, so that's a bad thing, powers of trade unions, is it? It is when they're disproportionate. It was really bad place in the 1970s. Let me, I, I'm going to have to declare here that my father was a shop steward uh, and a trade unionist, so... Sure. And many good people are. I'm not against all trade unions. I'm saying there's got to be a balance between the... the uh, between the ability of uh, people, business people, to employ people and to do and good employers to, to do good things with the, the people they employ, but also trade unions to interfere with that and hold the country to ransom. These measures do not just affect the public sector. Any private sector business in the UK, regardless how big it is, will have to give access to trade unions to come and talk to their staff with a view to recruiting those people in a trade union. And there's no... But a happy workplace, then employers shouldn't be worried, should they? Well, of course... But the, this, is, this is Labour's argument. You know, good businesses won't have to worry. Of course you have to worry if you're a small business you need to go to an employment tribunal. Listen, look at the impact assessment itself. 40% of people they surveyed, the Labour government surveyed, said they would increase prices to cope with these new rules. 17%, so one in five employers... It's a lot of numbers. Well, these are the numbers that are important to hear. One in five employers say they would cut jobs to deal with these new measures. That cannot be good for the economy and cannot be good for small businesses. Quick thought before I let you go. Um, do you have a good word to say about their new NHS plan? Well, if it works, of course I do. I mean, you know, we're not here to oppose everything they do. You know, we, of course, we agree that the uh, NHS needs reform. Some very good people working there. We need to relieve some of the pressure, that middle management, to let good doctors and good nurses get on with their job. And if they can do that, I'd be the first to support it. It's always great to see you. Thanks and for coming in. Really appreciate it.